Hello and welcome to the February 2013 edition of Buncombe Weekly, a show right here on BCTV to let you know all about upcoming county-sponsored events. Now just to let you know, all the information I'm going to give you in today's episode can be found at buncombecounty.org. And also, if you'd like to check out this program or any of our original programming, make sure to check out buncombecounty.org slash bctv. And finally, if you subscribe to our online magazine, Buncombe County Easing, through our homepage, you can get up to the minute county information sent to your inbox every week. Well, if you're a property owner in Buncombe County, then you've recently received your tax revaluation notice in the mail. Now, if you have any questions on what this number means, how it was established, or why it was done now, there's a great video that you can watch on buncombecounty.org slash bctv. It's an episode of our Buncombe Life series with Kathy Hughes and tax director Gary Roberts. They go over all of these questions and the tax department's frequently asked questions. To make it easy for you to find, we've also put the video on the tax department's website at buncombecounty.org slash tax. Now, if you want to appeal your tax revaluation, you have three options. Attached within the letter you receive in the mail signifying your new tax value will be an appeal form. You just have to fill out the form and mail it to the tax department. Option two, you can call 828-250-4940 and schedule an informal review with the tax office appraiser. Please be aware, however, that the tax department will have higher than normal call volume at this time, so they'll do their best to get to your request in a timely manner. Finally, you can appeal online. The online appeal is a new option for 2013, where the property owner can complete the form and attach information such as pictures, sales information, and appraisals that are relevant to the appeal. To appeal online, just visit buncombetax.org slash appeal. The website will give you a step-by-step -step guide to appeal. And as always, if you have any questions about the tax revaluations or the appeal process, please visit buncombecounty.org slash tax. And speaking of taxes, April will be here before you know it, so don't wait till the last minute to file your taxes. If you need assistance, the AARP Foundation Tax Aid, in cooperation with the IRS, the NC Department of Revenue, the Council on Aging, and the Buncombe County Public Library System, are offering free tax preparation. They're offering it at many locations, including right here at Pack Memorial Library. The tax preparation is for taxpayers with low and moderate income with special attention to those aged 60 and older. Assistance will take place at four county libraries. Pack Memorial Library on Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The West Asheville Library on Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., the Weaverville Library beginning in March on Thursdays at 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and finally the Black Mountain Library on Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. For a list of documentation to bring, directions, and more information, please visit buncombecounty.org library. Well, every year, the Western North Carolina Soil and Water Conservation District hosts a tree seedling sale right here at Jesse Israel & Sons Nursery at the WNC Farmers Market. It's a great opportunity for you to get your hands on some bare root seedlings in a variety of species. The sale will take place on Thursday, February 28th from noon to 5 p.m., Friday, March 1st from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, March 2nd from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. or until they're out of stock. If you'd like to pre-order seedlings, you can do so anytime between February 4th and 21st. You must pick up your pre-orders on Friday, March 1st by 5 p.m. or else they will be released for sale. The following species are available for pre-order and on-sale dates. White pine, black walnut, butternut, persimmon, river birch, flowering dogwood, sycamore, eastern redbud, southern crabapple, crepe myrtle, northern red oak, and white oak. Eastern white pine seedlings are 25 cents each, and the hardwood species are 75 cents each. For more information on the tree seedling sale, please visit buncombecounty.org soil or call 828-250. 4785. If you're looking to add a new four-legged member to your family, look no further than the Asheville Humane Society. They have plenty of adoptable cats and dogs like Carmelo here, who probably won't be around much longer because he's so adorable he's going to get adopted any second now. But when you adopt from the Asheville Humane Society, not only are you saving a life, but all the pets have been spayed, neutered, and received their shots.
Asheville Humane Society is dedicated to the compassionate treatment of animals through education, sheltering, and adoption. Come visit the Asheville Humane Society Adoption Center located at 14 Forever Friend Lane to visit all the wonderful animals available for adoption just like this one. Hansel and Gretel are two unique and adventurous pups. They are eight months old and they're Dachshund Yorkshire Terrier mixes. Noelle is a four-year-old black and white female cat. She is a real chatterbox and enjoys watching her surroundings. Clifford is a big hound dog mix. He is a two-year-old male looking for a patient family who will train him and take him on hikes. Angel is a lovable bobtail kitty. She is a petite one-and-a-half-year-old tortoiseshell cat who likes to explore. Brady is a one-year-old male shepherd mix who is a little shy but will thrive in a home of his own. Charlene is a mature young lady. She is a six-year-old brown tabby with white. She is looking for a family to love her. Walter is a playful nine-month-old male chihuahua mix who will make a great lap dog. To reach the Asheville Humane Society Adoption Center, call 828-761-2001. Or to view all of our available animals for adoption, go to our website at ashevillehumane.org. Well, we're here at the Register of Deeds office with the Register of Deeds, Drew Reisinger, to tell us about an upcoming display in February outside the Register of Deeds office. So thanks for joining us, Drew. Hey, it's great to have you guys here. Okay, so tell us about this new display. Um, so our office, the Buncombe County Register of Deeds office, is partnering with um, the Buncombe County Clerk of Courts office and the library um, director, Ed Sheary. Um, our goal is to try and commemorate the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation. So uh, the way we're doing that is we are bringing real, uh, original documents, um, and we're bringing them to the people of Buncombe County. We're going to put them on display. So, you know, and what are these documents? So 150 years ago, um, before the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, we traded slaves, we traded human beings into slavery on the steps of the Buncombe County Courthouse. Um, we want to be very real about our history and we want to uh, take accountability for it. Um, and therefore, we want to not bury this history in Buncombe County's past, where it's always been kind of sitting on the shelves in the Register of Deeds office, and no one really knew much about it. Um, so our goal is to bring to light our past, um, to accept responsibility for it, um, and to let it be known to the public. And um, we also hope that this will uh, allow kids and students to research uh, slavery. I was going to ask, is there a genealogical aspect to this? There is. Um, so not only are we going to display the original slave deeds, we are going to, um, what we have already done is we've compiled a list of everywhere uh, a slave was traded in Buncombe County, and we've put it all online on the internet. We've compiled that history and made it available for everyone to do the research themselves. So genealogists who care about African American genealogy can go through and research uh, the slave trade of Buncombe County. Oh, great. And uh, obviously, this must have been a, a, a long process to put all these slave deeds online. Where were they all found? Where were they all kept? So probably a decade ago, there was a group of students, uh, high school and college students, working with the Center for Diversity Education at UNCA. Um, they compiled all these paper documents, and they researched everywhere that they could find a bill of sale. And a bill of sale, most of the time, was trading human beings. Um, sometimes they were selling other things, uh, but realistically the majority of the time, uh, prior to 1862, it was trading human beings into slavery. Um, so they went through and they compiled that record and we then took it one step further and we um, used the technology that we now have in place since most of our deeds are online. Um, to where we were able to sh shift through and find all of um, the original slave records, and now they're all online, so anyone can go to buncombecounty.org backslash slave deeds to find that information. Okay, and uh, we're one of the first counties in the state to be doing this. Are we the first? We're, so there's a handful of counties who have, across the country, who have compiled the information, and, I, and you can find it in uh, their office if you live there and you can easily access it. Um, we're one of the first in the country who has compiled all the information of the slaves who have been traded in Buncombe County and put it online for people to view. So 
we're trying to make it more accessible and more online so you don't necessarily have to come into the Register of Deeds office. We'd be glad to welcome you into our office and give you a tour of um, where the records are and what they look like. Um, but they're all online if, say, you don't live in Buncombe County or, say, you don't have time to come into the office. Okay, so what's the benefit of using it online and why should every county be doing this? Our goal is to help <clears throat> people who are curious about the genealogy of um, African Americans. You know, if you are trying to f figure out who your parents were and where they came from, it's really hard to find that information because 150 years ago, everything stops. You can't find that information. So if more counties were to start putting that information online, African American ge genealogists um, um, or those studying African American genealogy uh, can find it if people start working together in other counties and the rest of the country starts getting on board with this idea. So tell us about the exhibit. Um, so over the next few months, uh, starting in February, uh, we're going to have a display right here in the lobby of 35 Woodfin Street. The William H. Stanley Center now. The William H. Stanley Center. Um, and uh, we are going to make those documents available on display so uh, students can come, uh, families can come, and they can look at it right here in the lobby. Um, and thanks to Buncombe County uh, IT department and folks for helping us get all this stuff online and make it look a little more nice and fancy. Um, people can find that information online at buncombecounty.org. This is going to be displayed from February for a few months, but afterwards, where can people see this? Um, so since we are working with the library, and our goal is to try and get it out to the public and allow people to really see some of these documents for the first time in Buncombe County history. Um, uh, it will also be at Pack Memorial Library. Downstairs there is a North Carolina collection and um, it's likely that that's where we're going to store it there so people can also who happen, see it who happen to be going to the Pack Memorial Library can see it on display there in the library as well. All right. Well, great. Thanks for joining us, Drew. This is a great idea and I hope everyone comes out and takes a look at these slave deeds. Great. Thank you, Max. Thanks. <laughs>
And speaking of libraries, not only are they a place where you can just check out your favorite book, CD, or movie, but they also sponsor many great events throughout the year for every age and interest. Here are a few coming up for February. Beginning on Tuesday, February 5th at 11 a.m., the Fairview Library is pleased to announce the addition of Mother Goose Storytime at their library. This popular weekly story time for the very young features rhythm, rhyme, stories, and song to promote language development and a love of books in babies 4 to 18 months of age. On Tuesday, February 19th at 7 p.m., the Fairview Library will host a How to Take Better Photos event. Catherine Vibert, photographer and town crier columnist, will present. Most of us wonder why our photos don't look as fabulous as the ones we see in magazines. Cat will project photos that illustrate the do's and don'ts of composition and exposure and teach you how to anticipate that great shot. On Thursday, February 21st at 6 p.m., the Skyland South Buncombe Library will hold their book club featuring the book Sweet Francais by Irene Nemirovsky. All interested readers are welcome to attend this or any of the library system's monthly book clubs for free. And finally, on Wednesday, February 27th at 7 p.m., the Black Mountain Library will host a meeting of the group Transition Black Mountain with Melissa Thurman to talk about what the group is doing for the town. They are a grassroots group of citizens from Black Mountain, aware of the challenges facing the town with peak oil, climate change, and economic instability, working to rebuild resilience and awareness in their community. For more information, you can check out their Facebook page at facebook.com slash transition Black Mountain. Now those are just a handful of the events sponsored by the Buncombe County Public Library System. To see the full list, make sure to check out buncombecounty.org slash library. And now it's time to keep an eye out for this week's Mountains Most Wanted. Mitchell Walter Bailey is wanted for failure to pay child support. Bailey is a 36-year-old white male with brown hair and blue eyes. He is 5 foot 11 and weighs 230 pounds. His last known address, 1396 Dillingham Road, Barnardsville, North Carolina. William Sean Bloomquist is wanted for failure to pay child support. Bloomquist is a 30-year-old white male with brown hair and blue eyes. He is 6 foot 1 and weighs 160 pounds. His last known address 6 Oak Hill Drive, Fletcher, North Carolina. If you happen to know the location of any of the mountains most wanted, you could receive a cash reward. All you have to do is email Crime Stoppers at tips at buncombecounty.org or call 828-255-5050. With your help, we can continue to make Buncombe County a safer place to live, work, and play. We're here at the Buncombe County Landfill with Bioreactor Manager Christy Smith, who's going to tell us about some of the new recyclables that are being accepted. So thanks for joining us, Christy. Sure, so tell coming. us about these new recyclables. Well, uh, we have all sorts of new plastics you can recycle now. As of January 2012, you can recycle plastic cups, yogurt containers, um, food shell plastic clamshell food containers. Um, like anything you get at the grocery store with the cookies or the cakes. Exactly, and, um, yeah, exactly. And uh, paper products have expanded too where you can recycle um, little juice boxes the kids eat in their lunches, um, milk jugs, the waxy line milk jugs that are the paper kind, and um, most of the plastics though, one through seven, is really what we've expanded. So everybody in their blue bag program at home can now recycle all those items. And uh, the drop-off centers that are throughout the county, um, we're here at this residential recycling center and those items are accepted here as well. Okay, and you mentioned the numbers one through seven. Where can you find those numbers on the recyclables for the most? Just flip it over and look on the back. Flip There's a little recycle ring, it'll have a number in it, and that's how you know if it's one through seven, throw it in your blue bag. You're okay, good and go. if it doesn't have anything like that, and if it's made of, pla if it's made of plastic, it pretty much will have that yeah, on it nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Most all your plastic items are going to be one through seven. There's a few rare ones that are eight or nine, but you don't see those very often. Okay. And when you mentioned blue bags, where can you pick up these blue bags? Oh, uh, you can get them at most grocery stores. Ingles has them in your trash bag section. Um, Walmart's got them. Most of your stores have a, have a good 
variety of them. Aside from just the landfill, um, if you're a city resident of Asheville, you won't have to come out here. They do curbside. Right. Um, so what condition do these plastics and new papers have to be in for you to recycle them? Because you think that you have to clean them out and make everything right. sparkly before you throw it yeah, away. You don't have to clean it with soap and water or anything like that. They want to make it as easy as possible. Um, they do ask that you just rinse the items out, especially those plastic food containers. You know, you want to try to get those somewhat clean. and that'll, You'll be glad for that in your house, too, when you've got smelly plastic stuff if you rinsed it out. But um, they do want it rinsed and then the paper just sort of flattened especially cardboard like flatten that and that helps them out a lot so you mentioned all these new things we can recycle what are some things that people think that they can recycle that they can't okay that's a good one there's a lot of items actually still that aren't recyclable and that's just because of our local uh, material recovery facility called a MRF they have um, invested in some new technologies but they still don't have a way to recycle some items I've got a list here I'll read you it's aluminum foil that's one people like to throw in that is not recyclable because you think aluminum cans right exactly but totally different kind of metal in the aluminum foil versus the can um, dishes or cookware. People think glass, throw my mirror. No, don't throw your mirror in the recycle bin. Um, no dishes or cookware. Uh, styrofoam, that's still another hard one. That's not an item that's recyclable right now. Plastic wrap, like the wrapping you get in all your packaging, like if you buy a big thing of water bottles and they're wrapped in that plastic wrap. Oh, okay. That's like not the big plastic bag things. Right, exactly. Okay. That is not accepted right now in, in the blue bag program. Now, you can recycle those with your plastic bags at the grocery store. Okay. So you can recycle them just kind of in a different way. But like Ziploc bags and everything. Yeah, those are not. Those are not either. Right. Okay. Most of your plastic bags are, are not recyclable in your blue bag program. No light bulbs, drinking glasses, uh, plastic bags, paper towels or tissue, um, or black microwavable trays. You know, that may have a number on the back, but they're saying they don't want those. I'm not sure. Um, and you're not accepting the, because um, you have to recycle the CFL bulbs. You can't throw those out. You're not accepting those, are you? No, that's a different program. That's kind of a, a considered a universal hazardous waste, so those get handled a whole different way um, okay. here at the landfill. So don't our, bring them to the landfill. You can on Fridays from 9 to 3 9 during, to th <laughs> during okay. our HHW. Um, and we do have some fire departments that accept those, but certainly don't throw those in your blue bags or your bins for recycling at the curb. That's a whole entire different program. Okay. So. So not only can you recycle products at the landfill, but there are a lot of drop-off locations around the county. Where are some of them? True. There's one very convenient, our transfer station, which is uh, right off Brevard Road, okay. off of 240. Um, they have a, a pit where you can throw your blue bags. They also have a big dumpster for cardboard, so you can dump your cardboard there. Um, so that one's really convenient. Um, also, all of your... Waste Pro subscribers that are out there, please start using the blue bag program. You can just dump your recyclables at the curb. They pick it up once a week. You're already paying for it. That's the best, most convenient way. Um, and then we also have um, curbside management has a drop center. It's 24-7 outside of their facility. Um, that's in Woodfin. And then we've got the one here at the landfill that's open during landfill hours. Isn't there one behind uh, Asheville Pizza yes, and Brewery and on Merriman? Yes, that one too. Exactly. That one too. On, um, that one's 24-7 as well. Okay. So. Great. Yeah. So if people want to see uh, this information online or if they need to call you, how can they get in touch with you? Oh, okay. Um, the website's really great. We update that regularly. Um, we're at, on Buncombe County's website under the Solid Waste Department, and you'll see some links on the left if you just click Recycling um, and click the blue bag tag tab. That'll be the best one to, okay. to take that's it. That's BuncombeCounty.org forward slash solid waste, all one word. Right. Exactly. And uh, look forward to the One Person's Trash quarterly newsletter coming out in your newspaper. That'll tell you all about the items too. We've got some good pictures on here of, of some of the items I talked about today um, and there's some phone numbers and references there too for our local material recovery facility. Well thank you very much Christy for letting sure. us know about the new recyclables and I hope you all will pick up your blue bags at the grocery store and recycle all those new plastics and papers. Yes, me. I hope you guys do it as well. You know you're promoting North Carolina jobs by recycling. You're helping the Western North Carolina community and conserving those natural resources. So. Great. Well thanks Christy. Sure, thank you. Well, Buncombe County has many great resources to keep you up to date with county-sponsored events and promotions, and we've made it easy for you to find them all. Just visit BuncombeCounty.org, and they're right there on our homepage. You can like our Facebook page, join our Twitter feed to receive up-to-the-minute information, register with our Nixle feed to receive emergency notices to your phone, subscribe to our YouTube page to see all of our great original programming, Browse pictures from across the county through our Flickr account. Add our pictures and events to your Pinterest board. 
see our local weather forecast, subscribe to our RSS feed, and even stay up to date with the Sheriff's Office comprehensive crime mapping. So when you get the chance, visit buncombecounty.org to get easy and quick access to everything Buncombe County. You can also view all of our original programming right here on BCTV Charter Channel 2 or AT&T's U-verse service on Channel 99. And speaking of BCTV, not only can you catch all of our programs on television, you can view them all online. Just visit buncombecounty.org slash bctv. You can join Kathy Hughes as she takes you all over Buncombe County for Buncombe Life. Come out and play for a detailed list of all of our county's parks, greenways, and recreation department events. Buncombe News updates that covers all of the recent events from Buncombe County government. Stay in shape with our Healthy Life exercise classes. You can also join Margaret in the kitchen for cooking for your health. And of course, our Board of Commissioner regular meetings. We also have a number of programs from our Cooperative Extension Office, ranging from information on stormwater to even your monthly garden chores. If you'd like a copy of any of our programs, or if you would just like to send us some feedback, email bctv at buncombecounty.org. Well, thank you for watching, and like I said, any information you'd like to hear again, visit buncombecounty.org. Have a great February, Buncombe County.